ഹായ് ഗായ്സ് വെൽക്കം ടു കെൻസ മീഡിയ ഈ ചാനൽ ആദ്യമായി കാണുന്നവരാണെങ്കിൽ ഞങ്ങളുടെ ഈ ചാനൽ സബ്സ്ക്രൈബ് ചെയ്യുകയും കൂടെ ബെൽ ബട്ടൺ ഐക്കൺ വെക്കുകയും ചെയ്യൂ ദ തേർഡ് ലെവൽ ജാക്ക് ഫിനെ ദ പ്രസിഡൻസ് ഓഫ് ദ ന്യൂ യോർക്ക് സെൻട്രൽ ആൻഡ് ദ ന്യൂ യോർക്ക് ന്യൂ ഹെവൻ ആൻഡ് ഹാർട്ട് ഫോർഡ് റെയിൽ റൂട്ട്സ് വിൽ സ്വെയർ ഓൺ എ സ്റ്റാക്ക് ഓഫ് ടൈം ടേബിൾസ് ദാറ്റ് ദർ ആർ ഓൺലി ടു But I say there are three because I have been on the third level of the Grand Central Station. Yes, I have taken the obvious step. I talked to a psychiatrist, friend of mine, among others. I told him about the third level at Grand Central Station and he said it was a walking, it was a waking dream wish fulfillment. He said I was unhappy that made my wife kind of mad. But he explained that he meant the modern world is full of insecurity, fear, war, worry and all the rest of it and that I just want to escape. well who doesn't everybody i know wants to escape but they don't wander down into any third level at grand central station but that's the reason he said and my friends all agree everything points to it they claimed my stamp collecting for example that's a temporary refuge from reality well maybe but my grandfather did didn't did not need any refuge from reality things were pretty nice and peaceful in this day from all i hear and he started my collection it's a nice collection two blocks of four of practically every us issue first day covers and so on president roosevelt collected stamps too you know anyway here's what happened at grand central one night last summer i worked late at the office i was in a hurry to get up town to my apartment so i decided to take the subway from grand central because it's faster than the bus now i don't know why this should have happened to me I am just an ordinary guy named Charlie 31 years old and I was wearing a tan gabardin suit suit and a straw hat with a fancy band I passed a dozen men who looked hat with a fancy band I passed a dozen men who looked just like me and I wasn't trying to escape from anything I just wanted to get home to Louisa my wife I turned into Grand Central from Vanderbilt Avenue and went down the steps to the first level where you take trains like the 20th century then i walked down another flight to the second level where the suburban trains leave from duct into an arched doorway heading for the subway and got lost that's easy to do i have been in and out of grand central hundreds of times but i'm always bumping into new doorways and stairs and corridors once i got into a tunnel about a mile long and came out in the lobby of the roosevelt hotel Another time I came up in an office building on 46th street 3 blocks away sometimes I think grand central is growing like a tree pushing out new corridors and staircases like roots there's probably a long tunnel that nobody knows about feeling its way under the city right now on its way to times square and maybe another to central park and maybe because for so many people through the years grand central has been an exit a way of escape maybe that's how the tunnel i got into but i never told my psychiatrist friend about that idea the corridor i was in began angling left and slanting downward and i thought that was wrong but i kept on walking all i could hear was the empty sound of my own footsteps and i didn't pass a soul then i heard that sort of hollow roar ahead that means open space and people they talking The tunnel turned sharp left. I went down a short flight of stairs and came out on the third level at Grand Central Station. For just a moment I thought I was back on the second level, but I saw the room was smaller. There were fewer ticket windows and train gates and the information booth in the center was wood and old looking. And the man in the booth wore a green eye shade and long black sleeve protectors. The lights were dim and sort of flickering. Then I saw why they were open flame gas lights. There was brass spittoons on the floor and the across and across the station a glint of light caught my eye a man was pulling a gold watch from his vest pocket he snapped open the cover glanced at his watch and frowned he wore a derby hat a black four button suit with tiny lapels and he had a big black handlebar mustache then i looked around and saw that everyone in the station was dressed like 1890 something i never saw so we 
beards, sideburns, and fan- and fancy mustaches in my life. A woman walked in through the train gate. She wore a dress with leg of mutton sleeves and skirts to the top of her high button shoes. Back of her, out on the tracks, I caught a glimpse of a locomotive, a very small carrier and Eve's locomotive with a funnel-shaped stack, and then I knew. To make sure, I walked over to a newsboy and glanced at the stack of papers at his feet. It was the world, and the world hasn't been published for years. The lead story said something about President Cleveland. I have found that front page since in the public library files and it was printed June 11, 1894. I turned toward the ticket windows, knowing that here, on the third level at Grand Central, I could buy tickets and would take Louisa and me anywhere in the United States we wanted to go. In the year 1894, and I wanted two tickets to Galesburg, Illinois. Illinois. Have you ever been there? It's a wonderful town still with big old frame houses, huge lawns and tremendous trees whose branches meet overhead and roof the streets and in 1894 summer evenings were twice as long and talking quietly, the woman waving palm leaf fans with the, with the, with the first world war still 20 years off and world war 2 over 40 years in the future. I wanted two tickets for that. The clerk figured the fare, he glanced at my fancy hat band, but he figured the fare and I had enough for two coach tickets one way, but when I counted out the money and looked up, the clerk was staring at me. He nodded at the bills that ain't money, mister. He said, and if you are trying to skin me, you won't get very far, and he glanced at the cash drawer based him beside him. Of course, the money was old style bills half again as big as the money we use nowadays and different looking i turned away and got out fast there was nothing nice about jail even in 1894 and that was that i left the same way i came i suppose the next day during lunch hour i drew 300 dollars out of the bank nearly all we had and bought old style currency that really worried my psychiatrist you can buy old money at most at almost any coin dealers but you have to pay a premium. My $300 bought less than 200 in old style bills, but I didn't care. Eggs were 13 cents a dozen in 1894, but I have never again found the corridor that leads to the third level at Grand Central Station, although I have tried often enough. Loisa was pretty worried when I told her all this and didn't want me to look for the third level anymore. And after a while, I stopped. I went back to my stamps, but now. We were both looking every weekend weekend because now we have proof that the third level is still there. My friend Sam Vena disappeared. Nobody knew where but I sort of suspected because Sam's a city boy and I used to tell him about Galsburg. I went to school there and he always said he liked the sound of the place and that's where he is all right in 1894 because one night fusing with my stamp collection I found. Well, do you know what a first day cover is? When a new stamp is issued, stamp collectors buy some and use them to mail envelopes to themselves to the very first day of sale and the postmark proves the date. The envelope is called a first day cover. They are never opened. You just put blank paper in the envelope. That night, amongst my oldest first day covers, I found one that shouldn't have been there. But there it was, it was there because someone had mailed it to my grandfather at his home in Galsburg. That's what the address on the envelope said. And it had been there since July 18, 1894. The postmark showed that, yet I didn't remember it at all. The stamp was a six cent, dull brown, with a picture of President Garfield. Naturally, when the envelope came to granted in the mail, it went right into his collection and stayed there, till I took it out and opened it. The paper inside wasn't blank, it read. The note is signed Sam. At the stamp and coin store I go to, I found out that Sam bought $800 worth of old style feed and grain business. He always said that's what he really wished he could do. And he certainly can't go back to his old business. Not in Galsburg, Illinois.
in 1894 his old business why sam was my psychiatrist